Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India session of paper therapeutic nutrition this is the third and last lecture of the first module that is principle of nutrition care in the previous lecture we had studied about the concept of therapeutic diets objectives of planning therapeutic diets and then we studied about the various types of the modification of the normal diet in this lecture we shall be learning about progressive diet I am Dr. Jaspreet Kaur, presently working as Assistant Professor in Government College for Girls, Ludhiana, Punjab, affiliated to Punjab University, Chandigarh. And this project is funded by DTX Swayam Prabha, MHRD, New Delhi. In this lecture, we shall be focusing on concept of progressive diets, various types of progressive diets, and characteristics composition and usage of various type of hospital diet. Remember how we were getting the nourishment and growing before we were born? We could not eat through our mouth but yet we got all the nutrients from our mother's diet through placenta and then we were born and we just have milk. Till the time our body was old enough to take strain juices and lentil soup. And then we grew further and we tasted custard, gruel and we further started relishing mashed banana and apples too. And finally we were old enough to grab a mouthful of chapati and rice and we were able to eat whatever our family members were eating. This whole transition of taking nutrition from one stage to another is replicated in case of disease condition for, or for a person who is requiring some special care while they are in some healthcare setup. Similarly, in this type of diets known as transitional or progressive diets, they are planned as medical nutrition therapy in the healthcare setup. In healthcare setups, therefore, the patient care plan frequently involves transitional feeding, moving from one type of feeding to another, with several feeding methods involved simultaneously. While continuously administering the nutrients, they are based on the patient's nutritional need. This requires careful monitoring of the quality and quantity of the intake from the parenteral or enteral or the oral route. All these nutrition provisions, they make digestion easier and due attention is given to the individual tolerance and food preferences so that the food intake of the patient is maximized. So, during the transition stage from the parenteral nutrition, to the enteral nutrition or an oral diet, due attention should be paid in assuring the adequacy of macro and micronutrients. In the hospitals, the healthcare institutions, they have basic routine diets which are based on the normal diet pattern and they are prepared according to the recommended dietary allowance for a normal person. Now, these uh, diets, they are modified accordingly based on acceptability of the patient and then convenience of the service because in hospitals, they have to see whether the planned diet is easier to serve because they have to serve in ward, in the room service or in the ICUs, etc. And then lastly, ease of fitting the disease specific restrictions 
into the existing menu. So uh, based on these things, the progressive diets are planned. So let us explore various types of progressive diets. All the nutrition support care plans to strive using gastrointestinal tract whenever possible, either with the help of anti-nutrition or by total or partial return to the oral intake. But for the patients who are unable to take food orally, special feeding methods they are to be used to meet the nutrient requirement. So, enteral nutrition is provided by providing the nutrition support through the gastrointestinal tract that is orally or by assessing the gut through some tube feeding. The here clear liquid, full liquid or formula feed is planned and administered through the tubes. The composition of the feed will depend upon the place where food is being uh, inserted and condition of the gastrointestinal tract and accordingly we have to see what is the tolerance of the patient uh, of that typical feed. And second method is uh, that is parental nutrition that is more adopted to deliver the nutrients by way other than gastrointestinal tract and the main aim of the parental feeding is to maintain constant supply of the nutrients, early recovery and bringing the patient back to his routine quantity and ensuring that he returns to the oral method of the taking food. So here fluids they are containing water, glucose, uh, amino acids, minerals, vitamins they are given through the peripheral or central vein. Now we know hospitals and healthcare institutions they have basic routine diet. These routine hospital diets are broadly categorized into three categories. They are fluid, soft and normal or routine diet. So let us study all these types of progressive diets in detail. A liquid diet is one which consists of foods that can be served in liquid or strained form at room temperature. They are usually prescribed after certain kind of surgery. Degree of nutritional adequacy of these diets, they will depend upon the type of the liquids which are permitted. Liquid diets, they are of two types. They are clear fluid or full fluid diet. Let us see the characteristics of clear fluid diets. The clear fluid diets, they are made up of only clear liquids and they are served at room temperature. And they are planned by using the foods which have low residue content, which will help to minimize the load of food needing digestion in the intestine. It is non-gas forming, non-irritating and it is non-stimulating to the peristaltic action. Peristaltic action means that is the action which our intestines they take to move the food further for the formation of feces. The type of liquid provided may vary depending upon the clinical condition of the patient, the diagnostic test, or the procedure which is to be carried out or a specific surgery a patient is undergoing. Let us see the usual composition of clear fluid diet. Primarily, it contains water, carbohydrates and electrolytes. If we see the composition it provides approximately 400 to 500 kilocalories of energy, 5 grams of proteins, negligible fat, 100 to 120 grams of carbohydrates per 24 hours. The purpose of clear liquid diet is to provide fluids and electrolytes and to prevent dehydration. The diet is inadequate in calories and essential nutrients 
as we have seen the basic composition the clear liquid diet therefore it should not be the sole source of nourishment for more than 1 to 3 days without addition of protein calorie vitamin or mineral supplementation the clear liquid diet that leaves minimal residue in the gastrointestinal tract because of its composition now the initial feeding volume that ranges between 30 to 60 ml this minimizes the stimulation to the gastrointestinal tract the diet is used as an initial feeding progression between the intravenous feeding and a full liquid diet or a solid diet that follows any surgical procedure so let us see where we can recommend clear fluid diet it has application in many illnesses which is characterized by fever whenever there is acute illness or there is inflammation or surgery that produces marked intolerance of food leading to nausea vomiting anorexia distension and diarrhea hence routine diets they are to be restricted this diet will relieve thirst will hydrate the tissues and it will prevent the gas formation in the gastrointestinal tract hence it can also be used as dietary preparation for the bowel examination or for surgery so what all is included in clear liquid diet it is water it could be tea or coffee without milk or cream it could be strained fruit juices it could be coconut water, lime juice, or whey water, barley, or arrowroot water, rice sanji, plain gelatin uh, along with the sugar or salt added to some liquids. Or we can always give carbonated beverages if they are tolerated. And then we can go for some commercial high protein, high calorie supplements which can be dissolved in any beverage or water along with honey and then we can always go for some clear dal soup or strained vegetable or meat soup so these are few examples of clear liquid diet the second type of liquid diet is full fluid diet and if we see the characteristics of this type of diet it bridges the gap between the clear fluid and the soft diet. In this diet, we use only liquid foods or which are readily liquefiable inside the stomach. Only these foods, they are added. And liquid foods which are free from the cellulose and irritating spices and condiments, they become part of this type of diet. Let us see the composition of full fluid diet. A properly planned diet is nutritionally adequate and gives 1200 to 2000 kilocalorie. It can provide 35 to 65 grams of proteins depending upon the choice of food and based on the needs of the patient. It can be provided at 2 to 4 hour interval time. This diet is usually low in vitamin B12, vitamin A and thiamine that is vitamin B1. By carefully planning, this diet can be made adequate for maintenance of all the requirements except fiber. Liquid nutritional supplements or blenderized foods that can be added to improve the nutritional adequacy of full fluid diet. Because the diet is generally inadequate in fiber, constipation that can result because of prolonged use. If it has to be used for a longer period of time, then we may have to go for vitamin, iron or liquid nutritional supplements to make this diet work.
the purpose of this diet is to provide an oral source of fluid for individuals who are incapable of chewing swallowing or digesting the solid food it is also used as an intermediate provision to the solid foods following surgery along with the parenteral nutrition or in certain procedures where chewing of the food is not possible such as in jaw wiring it is also used in the presence of esophageal or gastrointestinal strictures and during moderate gastric inflammations or for people who are actually ill patients we can use this diet so what all foods can be given we can go for some plain gelatin desserts such as ice cream or soft custards corn starch puddings they can be given and then we can go for some strained uh, fruit juices or vegetable juices they can be given tea can be given or yogurt which can be flavored we can give then purees they can be given we can go for milk or milk based beverages they can be given coco butter and then something like half boiled egg that can also be given so after liquid diet let us see the second type that is the soft diet it is the most frequently used hospital diet it is a transition diet that bridges the gap between the acute illness phase and convalescence and we use this diet to fill the gap between the fluid and the normal diet now this soft diet that provides the soft whole food that is lightly seasoned and moderately low in the fiber the foods they have soft texture and they are easy to digest small volume meal they are offered until the patient's tolerance to the solid food is established now let us see the composition of soft diet the micro and macro nutrient of the soft diet are planned on the basis of height weight gender age activity pattern and the type of the disease so a carefully planned soft diet is nutritionally adequate and if we see the composition it may provide anywhere between 1500 to 2000 kilo calories of energy 35 to 65 grams of proteins along with vitamins and minerals a properly planned soft diet can be continued for longer period of time but we may have to consider supplementation or in between feeding which are recommended for the patients who are unable to consume adequate amount of food as we know soft diet is a very popular diet and which is commonly used for variety of health conditions especially which are requiring low residue after the digestion and absorption hence it is used in many conditions involving acute infections or some gastrointestinal disorders or after the surgical procedures a soft diet freely permits the use of soft raw fruits which are without skin and without seeds and then we can go for broth and all soups washed pulses in the form of soups or in combination of cereals or vegetables such as we can go for khichdi daliya breads or ready to eat cereals they can be given uh, which should be of refined form for example we can go for poha upma pasta noodles they can also be uh, given so uh, these are the example and then we can always give milk and milk products such as cheese can be given and then we can go for some milk beverages yogurt or uh, light cheeses like for example kheer halwa custard jelly and ice creams they can be given and along with that we can always give 
uh, tenderly cooked eggs and then minced ground stewed meat and meat products for those who are non vegetarian then some sort of uh, fat can be given in the form of butter cream vegetable oil and salt and sugar that is also given in the moderation and we can always give some cooked vegetable which are soft in nature so do we need to avoid something yes we should avoid the nuts or rich uh, cakes or pastries or the desserts and then we should avoid raw vegetables which are heavily spicy foods or which are gas forming foods they are the things which we have to take into account and especially the seeds of the fruits which are very harsh so we have to avoid mechanically soft diet is another fine type of normal diet which is modified only in texture for the ease of mastication it is used when a patient cannot chew or use their facial muscles for a variety of reasons it could be dental it could be medical or some surgical condition the food in the diet may be liquid chop puree or regular foods with very soft consistency so let us see what are the different type of foods that can be included in this type of diet we can choose chopped vegetables or we can use fruits and vegetables with their skin and seeds removed and then we can choose chopped powdered nuts or dry fruits and along with that we can see if we can use minced ground pureed vegetarian or non vegetarian food items soft breads chapati rice all of these things they can be included in this type of diet next comes that is the last and most frequently used diet in a hospital setup that is normal diet now normal diet is also known as full diet regular or general diet and all the hospital patients who are not on the therapeutic diets they can take this normal diet this diet can be taken by both ambulatory or bed patients without any specific dietary recommendations it acts as the basis for therapeutic modifications too since this diet consists of all the food items which are eaten by person in healthy condition it provides maximum nourishment with minimal effort to the body and it is more acceptable and there are more chances of patient compliance because the patient has a very good connect with his usual feeding and then it is easier to plan it is easy to cook or prepare by the family members or in the hospital kitchen also then it is easy to evaluate and it is easy to modify by the dietitian because it is a normal diet and we have already done all the calculations and that is why Uh, this diet is more popular normal diet is planned to be consistent with the recommended dietary allowance of nutrients and is based on the various food groups since the patients in hospital they are on bed rest hence we go for diet which are containing 10% less calories as compared to the normal rda values but if the patient has lost too much of weight then we do not reduce the calories and on top of it we have to see that the protein has to be increased by 10% to counter catabolism which has been initiated because of illness this type of diet provides 1600 to 2000 kilocalories of 
energy and then 60 to 80 grams of proteins along with micro and macronutrients and since it is a balanced diet that is why it can be accommodated for majority of the cases. So let us see where it is recommended in. It is usually based on the cyclic menu which is planned according to the region where their uh, hospital or the nutrition care place is, the type of the hospital and the type of patients they are looking for, they decide what will be the normal menu pattern. And then nutritional adequacy of the diet, that will depend upon the patient's selection of food and then it will depend upon the patient's actual intake of the food. And it is recommended in all people who are permitted to any type of the diet or without any restriction in amount. So what all we can eat for a normal diet? Of course, just like all the balanced uh, diet plans, we can go for all the food items which are a part of healthy balanced diet. So it will contain rice, dal, chapati, vegetables, salad, dhokla and then soft cooked vegetables, milk and milk products, cooked vegetables and we can create a healthy balanced diet. Okay, do we need to restrict something? Yes. We do need to restrict few things. For example, we have to restrict which are fatty food, which are rich, fried, strongly flavored items such as pickles, pastries and then condiments. And these things, they are to be taken into account. So, let us summarize what we have studied in this lecture. We have studied about the concept of progressive diet, which tells us the progressive diets are the diets which will help in progression from no food to full food. And then we studied what are the different types of progressive diets. And then we studied what are the characteristics, composition and usage of full fluids, soft diet and normal diet. So, with this lecture, we finish the module 1 of this course that is Therapeutic Nutrition. In this module, in the first lecture, we learned about the nutrition care process and various steps of nutrition care process in healthcare setup. We also learned about the role of food and nutrition in the treatment of various diseases and disorders. Then we explored about what are therapeutic diets. And then we discussed the purpose of dietary modifications and various types of therapeutic adaptations possible in the second lecture. These included liquid diets, soft diets and various modes of feeding such as oral feeding, tube feeding, peripheral vein feeding and total parental nutrition. And lastly, in this lecture, we explored the concept of progressive diets characteristics, composition and application of various progressive diets for the early recovery of the patient. Thank you.